Blue Jay fans, we are here to break down both of the games that we saw today. The first one happened at 2 o'clock and the second game happened at 6.10. Both games were in very opposite directions for the Toronto Blue Jays. The first game went very, very well. The second game, not so much. But we're going to break down both. Let's start with the first game of the, uh, of the day, which happened earlier today at 2.10. Starting pitcher was Steven Matz for the Blue Jays and Mike Miner for the uh, Kansas City Royals. And the Blue Jays teed off on Mike Miner early as Lourdes Gurriel Jr. doubled and Randall Gritchick comes in to score and so does Vladdy because uh, it wouldn't be a Vladdy day without him flying around the bases once. And the Blue Jays are on top 2-0 in the very first inning before Matz even takes the mound. And then in the top half of the fifth inning, meanwhile, Steven Matz doing great. Jonathan Davis comes up and crushes the ball 107 miles an hour off the foul pole. It's gone. Jonathan Davis's first hit of the season is a home run to give the Blue Jays lead. Uh, I guess bring the lead up to 3 0. All right, exactly where you want to be. Next inning, top six, Vladdy gets a 90 mile an hour fastball from Mike Miner up in the zone. Look, you can beat players with 96, 97, 98 up in the zone, but if you're throwing 90 at the top of the zone, that's BP fastball. And Vladdy turned around and just drilled it. He just turned that ball around and crushed it out of here. Back to back nights, Vladdy with a home run. And the Blue Jays are now up 4 0. Meanwhile, at this point in that top half of the sixth, you know, Steven Matz is a no-hitter going, and unfortunately, you know, even if he went seven innings, it wouldn't technically count as a no-hitter. It would count as a it was a, it would count as a shutout, which kind of sucks. But he was dealing. Now in the bottom half of the sixth inning, he does give up an RBI double to Andrew Benintendi, and that was all he all she wrote for the day. But what an outing for Steven Matz. And then to add insult to injury, Marcus Simeon, it's a sacrifice fly in the top half of the seventh inning to give the Blue Jays a 5-1 lead. And that is how the game finished. Olise goes out there for the seventh inning to, to shut the door and call it a day. And the Blue Jays win the, the opener 5-1 and improve to 7-7 seven and, uh, seven and seven on the season. Let me get my other notes here for you guys. So the game notes that I have here, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. without a doubt has yet another beautiful game for the Toronto Blue Jays. Two for three in the game. Has an RBI on the solo shot and scores two runs. Uh, one on the Gurriel double and then obviously himself on the home run. So another great day at the plate for Vladdy uh, in game one. Randall Gritchick, I mean, he's been having a great season so far, and he shows that again in game one. Two for three with a run score, so a great, do a great job by Randall Gritchick making an impact there. And Jonathan Davis, haven't seen much offensively from him this year, but he went out there today and did a job. Two for three, scored a couple runs, stole a base, and had an RBI, obviously, on a solo shot. So a great day at the plate for Jonathan Davis. Much deserved for him. But... As much as the offense was great and they got a lot of key hits in that game, Steven Matz, without a doubt, is the player of the game in this one. Six innings, only allowed two hits. Both were in the same inning. And walked two and struck out five and allowed that one run, the RBI double from Ben Intendi. So what a job for Steven Matz. Three consecutive outings of allowing only one run. He has been unbelievable. He's won all three starts as a Blue Jay. He, he's tied for the Major League lead in wins because he's won all three starts. The Blue Jays have gotten him some offense in all of those games. I mean, I have to give them that. But he's gone out there and thrown up zeros. And that's exactly what you need from your starting pitcher. The Jays have not had a, a lot of that this year. So for, for, for to see Steven Matz go out there and throw six, uh, he was great. He was fantastic. And then Rafael Dolis goes out there to finish things off there in the in the bottom half of the seventh inning. He goes a clean inning, walks a batter, but that's about it. Great job by Dolis finishing off. Now, something I wanted to bring up, and I wrote this down here. We've all talked about Kevin Bijou's defensive struggles at third base. He gets the ball off the hand yesterday, and it was just kind of a complete disaster there at 30 leaves the game. He was playing catch before the game today, so it doesn't seem like it's all that serious. But in my opinion is this. Jays fans, do you remember... I think it was in 2019. The Jays tried him in left field, right? Because they had, I think they had uh, uh, Hernandez in right, and, and Gurriel was kind of, I think he was at shortstop at the time. And they weren't sure what to do with Biggio, right? They, they put him in left field. He was, he was rough out there. They put him in right. He was pretty good. 
Now, let me know if you, if you agree or disagree with me. But Kevin Biggio, when he's on the right side of the field, if you're, if you're at home plate looking out to the field, if he's on the right side, so right field, second base, or first, he's very comfortable. But you flip to the other side of the diamond, short, third, left field, he really looks out of place. And I, I don't know why that is. I think the ball comes at you quicker at third base for sure. When you're reading a ball off the bat, it's definitely a lot different. I, I, I mean, I played second base my entire life. So playing third a, a few times... Yeah, it screws with your mind a little bit. And for Kevin Biggio, maybe he's more suited for that right side of the field, whether it's second base or right field. I don't know. Maybe that's something they look at moving forward because clearly he is not the greatest at third base. And we watched Santiago Espinal there in that game, in game one of this of the doubleheader, make some fantastic plays at third base. One especially was that double play that was right up the middle. What a nice snag in the in the backhand flip to Bo at short to turn the double play. Uh, it was a b brilliant play. And the Jays played very good defense in that first game. Well, let's move along to the second game. And as I mentioned, it was a tale of two games. Where are all my stats? I don't even know where I put them. Are they behind? Yeah, they are. See, this is what happens when you got to do two videos and you got notes everywhere. Okay. But the next game didn't go according to plan. And this is this showed right here the depth of the Toronto Blue Jays pitching staff, or lack thereof. Because the starting pitcher was Tommy Malone. And he did okay to start. And in the top half of the second inning, Alejandro Kirk, it's an, it's an RBI double scoring Josh Palacios to give the Blue Jays a 1-0 lead. But you go to the bottom of the third, and, and Tommy Malone starts to struggle a little bit, and... and and it was an infield fielder's choice for Andrew Benintendi, but uh, Di Draw Dyson comes in to score, and it gives it ties the game at one. But then up com comes uh, Santana, Carlos Santana, and he hits an RBI double, scoring Andrew Benintendi, giving them the two one lead. Top of the fourth inning, Lourdes Curiel is a sacrifice fly. Who do you think is coming home to score? Of course, it's Vladdy, because the guy's just getting on base any which way he can. And the Blue Jays have tied the game at two, so you're right where you want to be. Problem though, bottom half of the seventh inning with Joel Payams on the mound, he gives up a walk off home run to Salvador Perez. So, as I mentioned, a very good first game, a rough ending to a overall very good day of baseball, but a rough ending for Blue Jay fans at least, uh, you know, to that second game. And it kind of just leaves a sour taste in your mouth uh, for the entire day of baseball, even though you won the first game 5 1. So with the 3-2 loss uh, in, in, in seven innings to the Kansas City Royals, the Blue Jays now drop to 7-8 and eight on the year. Obviously, injuries are really hurting this team. You know, in a 2-2 ball game, you probably wouldn't see Joel Pams out there if everybody was healthy. You'd probably see a Romano or a Merriweather um, or David Phelps. You know, somebody else. Bottom line, you would not see Pams out there. But you had to. And, and he gave up a shot to Salvador Perez. Pam's been, he'd been, he'd been fine up until that point, but it sucks. But it also did not help, though, the Blue Jays' offense. They didn't really get any offense going today. The only real guy that stood out offensively was Rowdy Telez. Two for three in the ball game for him, but there was a couple other one firs, but that's about it. They went over two with runners in scoring position. They just did not, I think they left a total of four guys on base. I was reading on my uh, Blue Jays center page. By the way, go check those guys out. They were doing some uh, post-game live today, so go check that out on the IGTV page. Uh, for the Blue Jays center Instagram page, go check that out, you guys. But um, Tommy Malone, like I mentioned, you know, he went two and a third. Uh, you have three hits, two runs, four strikeouts. But again, you got to look at it, right? The, 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 the big hit uh, was the Carlos Santana RBI double. Other than that, he wasn't all that bad, right? But again, you go, you go two and a third, you allow two runs, instantly it's not a very good line. You, you give up three hits, you struck out four guys, you know, that was huge. But in the end, you give up two runs in two innings, it's just not good enough. And, and Anthony Castro comes out of the pen and just does everything you need him to do. Goes an inning and a third, allows a couple of hits, but a strikeout, no runs across. So a good job to keep it uh, at two runs for him and allowing the team to, to, to crawl back into it and for Gurriel to hit that sack fly to tie it at some point at, at some point in that game. And Ryan Brucky went two-thirds of an inning, allowed one hit, got a strikeout. And Trent Thornton, who's been very good out of the bullpen this year, an inning and two-thirds, allowed two hits, a couple strikeouts, so he had a really, really good day. And Pamps' line was uh, two-thirds of an inning, allowed one hit, and it was obviously the one run. It was the walk-off home run from Salvador Perez. Now, 
The finale of this series goes tomorrow afternoon. It's a 2-10 first pitch at Kauffman Stadium. All right, Robbie Ray gets a start for the Blue Jays, and, and youngin' Brady Singer gets a start for the Kansas City Royals. And Blue Jay fans, if the name Singer remind, rings a bell, if you don't recall, if you do recall, I guess, spring training, the Blue Jays faced uh, uh, Brady Singer, I think, a few times, and they absolutely lit him up. Uh, he's in the array north six this season in eight and a third innings, so he has not been very good this year. Robbie Ray in his one outing against the Yankees was very good. So going off of the starting pitchers, it looks pretty good for the Blue Jays tomorrow. But we're going to have to wait and see what all plays out. A full nine inning game tomorrow, but we're going to have to see. If the Blue Jays can win that, they split the series. They're eight and eight. They're back to 500. And they did a good job. You got to try and stay in the stay in the hunt, stay in the pack here with all these injuries that you have right now. Just hang in there, fight every single day. You split today. You want to go into to, into Kaufman Stadium tomorrow, get a W, split the series, and be 500. It's exactly where you want to be after tomorrow. All right. So you know, what, guys, that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and uh, enjoyed the first game, but not the second game, if you're a Jays fan, but if you're a Kansas City fan and you like and you liked. The opposite of what I just said. Smack that like button. Do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the video, your thoughts on the games. Would you like, would you not like from these two games for the Blue Jays uh, overall? Twitter's down below for myself. Follow up, send me a DM, do that great stuff. The Instagram page is down below, so follow up there if you've not done so already. And I will talk to you guys. Uh, Raptors edition, they, oh goodness me. They play Oklahoma City tomorrow night, if I'm not mistaken. I think they play tomorrow night against OKC, okay, no, Monday night. So Monday night goes, okay, see you tomorrow night. I think. Anyways, they play Oklahoma City either tomorrow or Monday. I think it's a 7 o'clock tip-off, no matter what. The Raptors looking for the third straight W? We'll have to wait and see how that game plays out. And as for the Leafs, they, they play Vancouver tomorrow. It's a 7 o'clock puck drop there. As the Leafs look to get back in the win column, they've had a tough stretch as of late. You want to get back in the win column and get two points. Feel good again, all right? And with the, with the few days off that they've had, hopefully they come out there, guns ablaze, and we'll have to wait and see because Vancouver must be real rusty. Got to pounce on them early, all right? And as for the Blue Jays, as I've mentioned, their next contest is tomorrow afternoon, 2-10 first pitch at Kauffman Stadium. The finale of the four-game set against Kansas City Royals. Brady Singer on the mound for the Kansas City Royals, and Robbie Ray gets the ball for the Blue Jays, all right? So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Talk to you guys then.